It's Bank of America's crash warning that a mass exodus is coming. I'm your host, Steve Van Meter, and thanks for joining me today. And Bank of America is the first of the major banks to warn that more pain is coming for equity investors. Let's head over to Bloomberg, where we pick this story up. The Bank of America's heart and it sees pain and exit if the S&P 500 dips below 4,000. And a drop below 4,000 index points for the S&P 500 would be a tipping point, which could potentially trigger a mass exodus from equities, according to B of A strategists. Investors have already started fleeing stocks with outflows from equity funds over the past three weeks, adding up to the worst since March of 2020. Well, and we know where they're not headed, at least not to bonds, not yet. The average S&P 500 entry point, keyword average, for this huge $1.1 trillion in inflows into the stock funds since the start of 2021 was around 4,274 index points, which means a pain in exit requires a drop below 4,000 points, according to a note by the strategists on Friday. Now, what do they mean by that? Why does that number mean anything? Well, first of all, it's just a line in the sand. It's just a psychological number. It doesn't mean they actually know that that's the number of things will start to get worse. What they're suggesting is retail investors always sell when they're down. And if the market keeps going down, they believe that's about the number for the selling will start to ramp up. Let's take a look at that from a chart perspective. And here's the S&P 500 in this dash purple line that you can see, this is that average entry point, meaning there were buyers above it and buyers well below it. And at this point, this solid purple line here is at 4,000. We're heartened and believes that if this line were to cross, that you're gonna see a lot of people push the sell button and that could cause stocks to tank. And this is the worst since Nixon, his annualized total equity returns adjusted for inflation are now the worst since 1974 as, in, as investors look for a safe haven from inflation but aren't finding the stocks. Global stock markets have been struggling this year as investors are grappling with fears of an outright recession of aggressive tightening by the Federal Reserve in response to surging inflation. The main benchmark is now down 11% since January, a decline which adjusted for inflation is said to be the worst annual return since 1974. And bonds have been suffering the brunt of this year's investor exodus as world government debt is on the course for biggest loss since 1920. Of course, when I hear biggest loss, it tells me that that's biggest time to buy because retail investors always sell at the bottom and buy the most at the top. Let's continue the story because epic declines in bonds and stocks in 2022 reflect the coming flip by central banks from quantitative easing, where central banks buy bonds, to quantitative tightening, where they sell them. But of course, we know that that's not exactly what it means. We know that all the central banks are doing when they do quantitative easing is create bank reserves or force banks to create bank reserves out of customer deposits. And when they do quantitative tightening, they just give the banks back the bonds, which have the option to sell them if they're out doing a lot of lending. But if lending is collapsing, well, the bank's likely to hold on to those bonds and probably add to them. Adding the market sentiment is just awful. And while a relief rally is possible, given the depressed sentiment and positioning, it won't be a big rebound and investors should sell it. Well, the strategists compare the current situation to the 1973-74 period during Richard Nixon's presidency and say high inflation means the Fed must tighten until it breaks the economy or the market and who have who strategists who have been consistently bearish on equities. Until it does, asset prices must reset lower. And that's kind of exactly the whole point of what the Fed's trying to do here. They see there is a supply and demand mismatch. Now they can't fix the supply problem. They believe there's so much demand on one side that's overwhelming supply. So all the Fed's trying to do is pull back the reins and slow this train down, slow down a bit, and hopefully bring back demand in line with supply. The risk, of course, for the Fed and every central banker is you pull too hard on those reins and all of a sudden you end up in a recession. And of course, that is the easiest way to squish demand and, of course, drive interest rates back down to near zero is what the likely path is. But now the question then is if the Fed overdoes this and drives the economy into a recession and the stock market down, one thing that it shouldn't be crashing with it is your portfolio. Be sure to check out Portfolio Shield. I'll put a link up there in the description in the corner and the description below. Now, from the consumer perspective, well, Americans are already signaling that a slowdown of their purchases, which might also be weighing on the equity markets as there's just a lack of liquidity and a lack of buyers. 
Americans are showing inflation fatigue, and some companies see a breaking point. Cigarette smokers are trading down to discount brands as higher gasoline prices shrink their disposable income. Sleep Number and Temper Sealy say caution demand is falling for mattresses and some big ticket items. Even 1-800-Flower said it believes consumers are spending less on bouquets, partly because they're worried about rising inflation. And really, is it that people are worried about rising inflation or as we've seen that inflation adjusted wages are negative and they just can't afford these things and are anticipating being unable to afford them in the future and cutting back on their purchases that to me, makes a lot more sense. Robust consumer spending has powered the U.S. economy through much of the pandemic, clearly thanks to the government and fiscal stimulus, as households were helped by COVID-related government stimulus programs, rising wages, and a rebound in the U.S. job market that could be about to flip that's pushed the unemployment rate down to near pandemic levels. Consumer spending accounts for the bulk of U.S. economic output, and economists are closely watching how Americans deal with elevated levels of inflation. Of course, as we know, my prediction is they will cut their spending. Of course, I think that's the point the Wall Street Journal is trying to make with this article, but I expect more of that to come. And although the nation's gross domestic product shrank for the first quarter, threatening to enter a recession if it does the second quarter, as the trade deficit widened and inventory investments as businesses slowed, economists are expecting consumer spending to remain resilient in the months ahead. Now, why does the trade deficit widen? Well, when there's high prices in America, as we've talked about, foreign producers who have lower costs like to export to the U.S. and try to steal market share against high consumer prices it's just logical. It just makes sense. And that's what's really going on with the trade deficit. Government data showed that people have been stepping up purchases on travel and accommodations of late. Our March marked the second consecutive month where spending declined on durable goods, such as automobiles, appliances, on a seasonally adjusted basis. Of course, the question is, will people still travel? And you will see an elevated rate of consumer fatigue in terms of some of these price increases. The good news is that consumers want to spend on travel and entertainment, but are they going to feel healthy enough from a financial perspective to actually do that? And that is the real question that I have. If the market continues to go down and people start looking at what it costs to travel, airfares are higher. Hotels are higher, theme parks, destinations, food, everything is a lot more expensive and the wealth effect due to declining stock prices will go away, perhaps bring people to stay home for vacation or keep a much closer rein on how far they go because they can't afford to. And of course, now that translates into potential unemployment increases as we see that demand is starting to fall. And now we're gonna take a look at last month's ISM report on the factories, which just came out today. And here we see the manufacturing PMI at 55.4%, slowing a little bit from last month. And what we're going to take a look at now is just the breakdown here. And I want you to see that new orders are growing at a slower pace. And what that means is factory orders are coming in, but not as fast as before. Production is growing, but not as fast as before. So you see it's starting to slow down. Employment dropped from 56 to 50.9. Now remember, 50.0 is unchanged from the prior month. So it's growing at a much slower pace. And so what is the factory sector telling you from an employment perspective about future payroll reports? Well, they may not be that rosy. And so what we're seeing is factories look like they're getting capped out on their employment side pretty soon here. Supplier deliveries, these are suppliers coming into the factory, are slowing at a faster rate. So supplies coming in, starting to drop. Inventories, so these are inventories at the factory level that are ready to go. Procs that if there was a buyer can be shipped, they're growing at a slower rate, so there's less demand. Customer inventories still remain too low, which is a surprise, but there will be a point where that turns to flip. Prices are increasing at a slower rate. Backlog of orders. This is where you really get inflation. You want to see inflation in an economy. You need a large and growing backlog of orders. They're growing at a slower rate. You kind of get the idea that production is slowly starting to catch up. And at some point, this will flip the other direction. New exports orders are growing at a slower rate. Expect that to go down as the dollar continues to rise and imports are growing at a slower rate as well. But one notable thing we should look at is employment here in green against prices paid in new orders, suggesting, of course, prices paid being up here and new orders here, that as employment starts to roll over and head down, that of course, that will ultimately bring prices down, inflation down, interest rates down, and everything else down with it, as of course, employment 
makes a huge difference. So now we can see why the Bank of America is ringing the bell at 4,000, saying that could be the point where everyone sells. Well, at this rate, we certainly will see that coming at some point where everyone sells. The question is, will volatility break out to the upside as we talked about on Saturday's show before that happens and cause everyone to sell? Or will it just be a psychological level where we see the sell button get pushed? I'm Steve Van Meter. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being fans. Bye now.